This is the first presentation of our distance learning session, and I was giving the topic of non-muscle invasive bladder cancer. So I will start with this one, and inshallah we will continue. So by definition, the urothelial tumors that have not invaded in the retrusor muscle are called the non-invasive bladder. Uh, are the non-invasive bladder tumors. Traditionally, they were termed as superficial bladder tumors. However, we have moved away from the term because they are somehow uh, falsely reassuring to patients that uh, they share the same outcome. All the cancer with this category share the same outcome. My aim is, inshallah, by the end of this presentation, uh, uh, we would have a complete uh, grasp of the epidemiological factors of the bladder cancer, including the incidences, mortality rate, epidemiology, the pathology, the grading of the cancer, how do we stage it, and in which classification we categorize these cancers. How are clinically they are presented, how are we going to diagnose these patients, what are the prognostic factors and risk stratification of these patients, and depending upon the risk stratification, what would be our treatment option, DURBT, uh, DURBTs, and at the end we will uh, talk about intravenical therapy, as well as other options. <laughs> So bladder cancer is one of the most common uh, urological malignancy, second only to prostatic cancer. It is uh, among the top 10 most common malignancy worldwide, uh, accounting for 7% of all the cancers. Uh, there are different histological types, urothelial, non-urothelial. However, the most common one, making 90% of all the bladder cancers, they are the urothelial carcinomas. And they are the predominant type in the United States and the Western Europe. However, in the rest of the world, non urothelial is all moving to the presence of schistosoma, especially in the Middle East. In Pakistan, too, it's among the top 10 most common malignancies in the men. Uh, it, is, it has a very high incidence rate, as you can see, uh, around seven, it is estimated that 72,000 uh, men were diagnosed, people were diagnosed with this. Uh, Cancer and in the chart, in the chart we can appreciate the uh, presence of the predominance of male uh, versus the female. Uh, overall, globally, the rate of incidence of this cancer is uh, increasing. Mortality rate, uh, as as we can see, that uh, it is a significant. Relatively significant uh, mortality rate, uh, 3.2 in men and 0.9 in women. The five-year survival rate has over the years increased because of the uh, better treatment option we have. And in uh, 2000 and in 2017, it is estimated to be killed around 2,615 uh, people in Pakistan. Uh, this graph shows that. It is, it is common in Pakistan among top 10 bad uh, and it has killed around 26,014 people in Pakistan. It's a common cancer. Male-female ratio, male men are thrice as likely to develop cancer. The median age of development is around 69 in men, 71 in female. Uh, white population are more likely to develop these cancers as compared to Hispanics and African Americans. However, they do present and they are probably a uh, present of this cancer. Of these cancers, 70% are the superficial ones. And if we subclassify these, uh, 71, 70 of these 70% will be in the papillary stage, 20% uh, will be in the I1 that has invaded. And I will uh, talk about the staging later on. I will just introduce you uh, how do we uh, how are how common are we being presented with these cancers? Uh, uh, overall, the prevalence of these cancers because it's uh, 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 it's uh, it's not killing people, it's very high. Some of the etiological factors of the bladder cancer include environmental factors are the most common ones, uh, in smoking and the uh, chemicals from various chemical industries. Uh, make up the bulk of the uh, environmental factors we are exposed. Urothelium is exposed to various car carcinogens. Uh, either they are in their already active activated form or they are in uh, pre 
pressure then they are activated in, within the urine uh, so our urothelium is exposed to a lot of various chemicals uh, looking at the uh, pattern they are multifocal in their presentation so the concept of field uh, cancerization that they are uh, activated to their cancers form within the uh, bladder opposed to this uh, uh, concept I have enlisted here some of the carcinogens that are causing the uh, some of the ecological factors in C we can see that smoking cigarette is one of the major uh, ecological factors of the bladder cancer. There are numerous, can, uh, around 60 chemicals have been identified in uh, cigarettes that can lead to malignancy. Uh, the relation between the uh, factory workers and workers in various industries and their uh, ability to, uh, and they have developed the bladder cancer, we can associate the uh, bladder cancer with the occupational exposure of various chemicals. Some of the more, uh, common industries are the paint industry, leather industry, tanning industry, metalwork and various other industries have been shown to increase, uh, 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 have been shown to develop bladder cancer. Chlorination is normally done to uh, clean our water, purify our water, but however it is associated with development of bladder cancer, arsenic present in our water can also cause bladder cancer. Chemicals other miscellaneous causes include uh, Chinese herbs, herbal medicine used for used to treat asthma and various other conditions are associated uh, with bladder cancer. Other causes are cystitis, HPV infection, ideological causes, and such as that augmentation. So, Rafi, if uh, I may add something at this point, is if you go back to the previous slide. Uh, all bladder cancer patients, it's not necessary that they have got uh, association with all these things, but 50% of them do have association with cigarette smoking. But all cigarette smokers are not uh, those people who will develop bladder cancer. So there is an association between the disease and various factors, which uh, uh, I think uh, might include a lot of things which are derivatives of hydrocarbons. So hydrocarbons is one thing which leads to destabilization of a chromosome, which might lead to many cancers. One of them is bladder. The other one is maybe uh, kidney cancer. Uh, lung cancers are also involved whenever there is a history of uh, cigarette smoking. So we do have a lot of uh, um, carcinogens in the environment, a lot of factors, but one-to-one uh, -one correspondence between etiological factor and disease uh, occurrence is not there. So whenever you have got a patient with, um, say, bladder cancer, but you do take history with all these um, uh, carcinogens, and if there is an association, then you have got a plan in your hand uh, that the person should refrain from all these things. If the person is, for instance, uh, working in uh, hydrocarbon industry, then the person should get away from it. So this is very important. Uh, the other factor that we talk about uh, is the genetic factors between sedentary. However, the exact mechanism is still unclear. I have enlisted some of the uh, uh, changes in the genetic which may lead to development of that again. This includes deletion of genetic female chromosome 9. It is uh, one of the early earlier findings. Suppressor of P53 gene. Uh, this explains the monoclonal nature of these tumors. However, the uh, deletion of chromosome 11P and 70P are high associated with high grade invasive bladder cancer. Mutation in the fibromas growth factor is associated with uh, product, uh, development of papillomas. Now, uh, on to the topic of breeding. Uh, initially, in 1972, WHO <coughs> uh, distinguished papilloma from the, uh, from the uh, urocerial carcinomas. So it was a uh, papilloma and then grade 1, 2, 3. However, uh, the, the new system after uh, now that has developed, uh, you employ the term of papillom, pap papillary youth, uh, urothelial neoplasma of low malignant uh, potential, low-grade urothelial carcinoma, high-grade urothelial carcinoma. 
trading as we know uh, depends upon the architecture of the cancer and how well it corresponds with the uh, how well it, it is uh, similar to the tissue from which the cancer is being developed. In this uh, slide, we can appreciate the spectrum of the disease starting from low grade, very similar to the high grade, and they are almost overshadowing each other uh, in many similar ways. So we have a grade one, grade two, grade three in the uh, 1973, and in the uh, 2004 classification, we have uh, peptidary of uh, urothelial carcinomas, low grade, and high grade cancer. Before going into or to the staging of bladder, we know the anatomy uh, of, the, of the bladder. Uh, urothelium, urothelium is the epithelium that lines the uh, bladder, uh, ureter, and the proximal part of the urethra. And this is where most of our uh, cancers are being uh, are being developed. Then comes the lamina propria. There is a basement membrane which uh, between urothelium and lamina propria. Lamina propria. Invasion in the lamina, lamina propria uh, decides whether the cancer has invaded or not. This is followed by the layer of reducer muscle, the muscularis mucosa, and at the end, the connective tissue that surrounds the organ is the adventitia. And according to these uh, uh, anat anatomical layers, we are going to state our uh, bladder cancer. The first one is carcinoma in situ. This is the blood tumor of a high grade tumor and this is limited, limited to the urothelium. Then we have uh, TA, a papillary uh, tumor with a stalk in it and the tumor, it's a low grade tumor. Uh, the, and then comes the invasive layer, uh, the, bladder has, the cancer has been built in lamina propria. Now, just uh, a minute, just a minute. Uh, if you go back to this uh, point where you have this, um, no, uh, the, the other one. Yes. So if this is something which is a papillary growth, and uh, if we refer back to your point regarding papilloma, there is another variety which is known as inverted papilloma. Right. Uh, now this papillary growth is just an outpouching into the lumen of the bladder. If somehow this dips into the into the into the lamina propria. Uh, in an inverted fashion, then that is known as inverted papilloma. Inverted. Now, inverted papilloma has got a different potential of uh, not, on, not only growth, but also of cancerous activity. So uh, when we um, go along with this subject, then down the line, maybe we refer to this point again, what happens to a condition or a patient whenever you diagnose him as having papilloma? Because then the potential will be different from something which is a papillary growth. So right. a papillary growth is something different from another growth which we call as papilloma. Right? So yeah. please continue. The T2 tumors are those that have invaded the muscularis and they are the muscle invasive band cancer and T3 uh, are those that have uh, uh, invaded the perivagal fat tissue and outside of the uh, organ. In the next slide, this is the detailed table of what are the categories, the D categories, the N categories, the M categories. Uh, of This is basically a D and M staging of the cancer. So uh, we'll, I'll go one by one very quickly. DX is a uh, tumor that has not been assessed yet. E naught is no uh, primary tumor. TA is a papillary carcinoma. TIS is a blood tumor. T1 invasion lamina propria. E2 is invasion in muscularis. This is further divided into two categories. It's either superficial or it's deep. Uh, then we have T3, perivagal soft tissue invasion. Again, for the uh, classified two categories, A is microscopic invasion. B, we can appreciate, appreciate it microscopically. T4 is uh, the invasion is outside the organ in the prosthetics and the reticles. Uh, uterus, vagina, and the uh, abdominal. This too is divided into uh, two categories. A, it's either uh, prosthetic seminoma, seminal vesicle, or if it, it has invaded the uh, pelvic wall or abdominal wall. This is the PA category. End stage is uh, tumor can, uh, lymph node are not assessed. Uh, and not is no lymph node metastasis. And one is within the well, single node within the uh, 
two valves, multiple nodes within the two valves, and uh, if we can appreciate common ileic nodes, this is P and P. And finally, the M is M not no distant metastasis, and M one is distant metastasis. So again, further to divide into categories A and B. Clinically, uh, the patient are going to present us with hematuria both microscopically uh, uh, and uh, frank hematuria visible. Uh, other symptoms that include irrit irritative symptoms, frequency, urgency, other symptoms, pain. Pain is usually uh, related with the malignancy, uh, whether it's referring to bone or other part of abdomen. In some patients, metastasis will be the uh, only sim initial symptoms will, uh, that we are going to have. Incidental bladder cancer findings are very, very rare. That is, these cancers are basically symptomatic. They are going to present. <laughs> Looking at the symptoms, we can see microscopic, hematuria, irritative. They are somehow very similar to the other benign conditions. And in this way, we can uh, miss some of the cancers that are going to be presented to us. Clinic. However, all the individuals who are going to present with unexplained hematuria, that is, we are uh, not sure, uh, we have ruled out other causes, so we should examine uh, these and rule out malignancy in them. <coughs> some of the uh, features, some of the principles that we are going to use to diagnose are uh, bladder cancer, uh, physical examination should be done, but it's uh, not very informative when it comes to bladder cancer. Images include ultrasound, CT guide, CT scan, IU, IVU is done when the CT is not available to see any filling gaps, multi MRI. Urine cytology, because these cancers are shedding cells, we can, ca we can catch uh, these cells uh, when we do a urine cytology. Modern tests are being advised, which includes molecular testing, with, which have different specificities, but uh, they have most issues with them. However, the gold standard to diagnose a bladder cancer is a stethoscope. Stethoscope, either done alone or with other fluorescent techniques, we can Excuse me, uh, Rafi, uh, I think there is somebody who wants to raise a question here. Uh, his name is uh, Noman. Uh, Noman, you hear me? Sound. What do you want to say here? So I want to uh, 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 the GMN uh, uh, saying uh, during the ureter. Uh, it is uh, with the ureter is a very open. It uh, takes it into the class, into the class of D four, or it uh, ureteric opening along with the ureteric opening, it had to get the periphyseal. Uh, so, uh, uh, what I understand from uh, Noma's question is, Rafe, he wanted to say that uh, if the tumor is involving the ureteric orifice, or if the uh, tumor is going out of the bladder, these two stages are the same. What I have understand that if the bladder cancer is limited within the bladder, so that will not constitute a T4 stage. When the bladder uh, cancer has spread outside the uh, bladder is not organ confined anymore, that would be your T4 stage. So uterus should not include it; should not be uh, seen as, as an organ uh, organ limited spread. It, it's out, it's outside the organ. However, you can no, it, organ. it is not uterus. It is ureter. If ureter, ureter sorry, ureter. So if ureter is involved. If the ureteric orifice has been invaded by the tumor, uh, normally, practically, what we um, regard it as something which is like T4. Because uh, once we have done all the investigative uh, work, we cannot say that this tumor is actually at the orifice or it has invaded the ureter up to the mid ureter, maybe the upper ureter, or maybe going into the renal pelvis. So, uh, by all means, if there is an involvement of a ureteric orifice, we regard it something practically as having T4 stage. So, uh, I think that that was the point uh, which was raised by Noman. Noman, uh, is that the yes, point? Yes, I got it. Right. Yes, sir. 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 Yes,
this was the point okay thank you so please proceed so i was on the point of how we are going to investigate a patient presenting with these symptoms this should so we made the gold standard we using water technique like fluoroscopy use of uh, water tight and photocorporate uh, substances to better view the uh, bladder at the presentation so uh, this is the algorithm uh, of how we are going to investigate a bladder cancer if a patient present with hematuria or similar symptoms that we are suspecting is having a bladder cancer we will proceed with urine cytology and uh, cytoscope and if if we sister go if we see well there is a lesion on on it it's a non invasive blood tumor so invasive blood tumor we will proceed with urbt evaluation under anesthesia imaging to see if upper drag is in, in, involved or not and if we have come to the point we being able to diagnose it's urothelial carcinoma of pelvis ureter it's non invasive blood cancer or it's muscle invasive if it's non invasive then we start to risk stratify this as whether it's a low risk it's a immediate risk or it's a high risk that again <clears throat> okay now the prognostic factors one important feature of these non invasive bladder cancers are they are going to recur and they are going to progress 40 it's estimated that 40 to 80% of these cancer will recur and of that 10 25% will each individual category has its own Uh, recurrence rates and its own uh, <coughs> progression rate some of the important feature that uh, uh, these prognostic factors include are the histological stage the grade the number of the tumor the size of the tumor the frequency by which uh, they are presenting whether there is a concomitant uh, tas present or not or there is variant histology histology uh, is present or, is present or not So can you clarify this point variant by, histology is it can you clarify this point uh, what do you mean by variant histology the last point uh, uh, variant histology uh, i mean what do you understand by this thing uh, the, uh, the presence of micro papillary features uh, still micro still late features there certain histological features of these cancers which which make them more aggressive more invasive in nature right that's what i right. i mean this is true because something uh, whenever we for instance whenever somebody has gone through cystoscopy and biopsy and the report comes in whenever a um, clinician wants to read the report uh, what we are in, interested in is staging for instance and perhaps the grading but what we sometimes overlook are these smaller things which are written in in different sentences uh, maybe smaller sentences but these are very important and uh, one of them is lymphovascular invasion you see uh, the histopathologist is very meticulous whenever they write the report they write it in uh, in totality because th this is their field of um, expertise and there are many things which are important from their perspective and it is also very important if you want to practice our our clinical uh, say judgment and uh, acumen it is also very important to uh, keep all those things into consideration because they will give you a lot of clues um, what's happening with this patient in future for instance if there is lymphovascular invasion perhaps if the stage is superficial but since this is something which is written then this is not superficial it has already gone into into deeper planes maybe this is under staging so you have to not only look into the staging which is pt1 for instance but also you have to look into the statements the whole thing that has been written in the report it will give you maybe the another another picture so uh, these are some of the rates melanoma uh, has a very low uh, low rate of recurrence and we have the uh, uh, low malignant potential uh, low weight potential and as you can see in the high grade potential the rate of recurrence is extremely high uh, 55 progression is also uh, significantly high and the survival rate is as well highest in melanoma and yeah, right so again uh, at this point if we stop 
and uh, see for ourselves that there is a difference between papillary and papilloma right, right? so right. there is not only a difference in definition but also a difference in uh, uh, tumor genesis as well as in metastatic potential the gravity of situation so uh, uh, when you go on to the next stage of your uh, understanding of the subject you will make sure that the definitions of these two processes are pretty clear in your mind because you are the researcher you are the principal investigator okay. Okay. Uh, now we have established that some, you know, there are some of the uh, prognostic factors that are associated with non muscle invasive bladder cancer by employing these uh, prognostic factors we divide the cancers into three categories whether they are low risk categories intermediate risk categories and high risk categories and this is further going to um, uh, explain or will tell us how we are going to manage these patients that is it's going to devise our management plan so uh, depending upon whether it's a solitary low a low grade a da tumor no, with no ci uh, carcinoma in situ and a smaller size we see that uh, we have a different uh, strategy We use a single intra intracellular chemotherapy. We will use intracellular therapies later on. Uh, if if we have high risk, some of the features of high risk tumors are T1 tumor with carcinoma in situ, a high grade tumor, and other features include whether it's if it's multiple, it's large. Uh, then we are going to restage it. If it's in the, if the indication of systemic is present or not, and we are going to devise our Uh, strategy as per so an electronic calculator is uh, developed to assess the uh, to assess the uh, uh, rate of progressions and the uh, rate of recurrence is employed all the prognostic factors that I have already uh, uh, talked about and this is going to give us a score and all this score is going to tell whether it's going to recur within one year or within five year or what is the percentage it's going to give us a percentage and when it's going to uh, recur in five one year and five year so as we have we are going to see that every feature of tumor is carry is carrying a certain uh, score to it whether it's single it's it's multiple or it's more than it has certain score with it same with size of tumor and its primary recurrence its category or its concomitant cis and weight and by putting all these scores there are a lot of effects and figures but it's going to tell us whether it's going to uh, if there is a probability of recurrence within one year higher or lower that's how we are going to going to uh, use this uh, electronic calculator that that's been uh, developed so on these on these just just one uh, point at uh, at this uh, stage of your presentation uh, this eortc calculator it is something which is um, which is very important uh, maybe we are not using it in our clinical practice here at siut but this is something which we have to do and uh, uh, this is actually the positive effect of uh, a presentation that we get to know some of the things that we are not actually doing which we should have been doing um, right. now this calculator is very important in two aspects one is it gives you a clue whether the a particular patient with a particular history has got a recurrence or a progression rate of a particular percentage and that actually puts your patient into uh, 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 as you do risk stratification then you put your patient into a, a class and accordingly you will follow your patient and uh, devise a strategy of uh, managing the patient so uh, from now on i think uh, if this message is clear in our mind in the minds of uh, juniors as well as seniors all those who are involved in patient work clinical work that we will have this thing uh, maybe uh, as part of our own um, mobile telephones once we use it then we will be able to judge uh, the importance of uh, of such a calculator and uh, to my understanding this is this is very important of prime importance uh, now we have stratified our patient to low risk high risk indicate 
all these get all these uh, three categories that we advise our treatment plan where we going to give a single intravesical therapy where we going to give an intravesical uh, single intravesical second an intravesical therapy or a maintenance dose uh, th- this will come down on to uh, our risk that we uh, classify our patient in case of high grade invasive tumor we are going to give an immuno immuno uh, therapy and we will uh, obviously uh, do surveillance of these patient as well some of the indications as, as i have mentioned in a high risk patient includes a lymphovascular invasion uh, certain histology histological features a large diffuse persistent and recurrent d1 uh, high grade tumor a, a tumor of pure squamous and adenocarcinoma histology so uh, prostatic carcinoma in situ great d uh, uh, D1 tumor associated with CIS. However, if it's it's recurrent and it's persistent, some of the uh, other relative indications include uh, these symptoms, which which are uh, deliberating for the patient. <coughs> Extensive bladder involvement. Patient cannot be rendered uh, tumor free after uh, DORBD and recurrent, uh, persistent, high grade disease. even after maintenance ecg uh, therapy uh, what is t e u r b t t u r b t is uh, the procedure by which we are going to uh, scrape out top out all the visible tumor that's uh, present within the bladder with the help of uh, an instrument called stethoscope this is the initial treatment to all the uh, bladder cancers that we're going to given all the non invasive bladder against that we are going to give it we are going to give uh, it it uh, some of the initial include uh, our goal is to uh, completely uh, uh, remove all the visible tumor that is there a successful trbt include uh, that we are able to uh, assign the disease risk at what is the uh, clinical state of this cancer and <clears throat> Have we completely or adequately uh, uh, resected all the tumor, and what are the complications of this uh, uh, procedure? Uh, we will be we should be able to define the size of the tumor and the characteristics of the tumor, whether it's solitary, uh, flat, multiple, the size, and other features of the tumor. Restaging is important when we, uh, the initial TORBT uh, is either incomplete. or the patient is suffering from a high grade uh, uh, tumor so the the thing is in initial urbt we are sometimes under staging the we are we are not sure of uh, how advanced the uh, tumor has spread so in order to uh, the importance of restaging is that we should uh, the pathological examination and the staging should be accurate for the patient so for better staging we are going to restage the patient It should be done in two to six weeks. Uh, it is strongly recommended in the T1 as they are at a stage. Uh, some other techniques that are uh, utilized for metal visualization are the photodynamics, uh, in which we are giving a derivative of photoporphyrin, amino levonylic acid, and hexaamino levonylic acid. Uh, this is Going to better visualize, and we will be able to better visualize the cancer in the end of this technique. The other technique is narrow band imaging. With narrow band imaging, we will be uh, better able to appreciate the blood vessels and hence the tumors. So all these things, both these aspects are relatively new, are helping the patient in uh, better visualization of the tumor. <coughs> both these uh, techniques have been through the detection of non invasive bladder and not only and, uh, not only that uh, the goal is not only to visualize the tumor but the goal is to reject it to an extent where the tumor is going beyond the confines of visual perception right. you see uh, we have to aid our visualization in order to go beyond the surface Uh, if you go back to the uh, previous slide, uh, the blue light cystoscopy, the, the, uh, yes, this one. 
you see th there is a difference between the two one is the blue light cystoscopy uh, which is with the uh, hexaamino levulinic acid and here on the background there is a blue light and over this blue light there is something which is violet in color and that is the tumor when you reject it out unless and until that color goes off and you have got a surface which is blue in front of you the tumor is still there for instance if you take it out in layers one by one you go to a, uh, a surface where the tumor is actually going deeper into the maybe lamina propria into the muscularis propria and that would gain uh, that would give you the same shade of violet color so you have to reject it out unless you get the same blue color which is a normal color of the surface right so in that way this is color aided um, tumor resection and it is uh, uh, it is very helpful it will give you the completeness of your procedure rather than just the identification of tumor now to the intravesical therapy intravesical therapy is uh, is going to permit us to give these immunotherapic and chemotherapic agents directly into the bladder after a successful eurbt this uh, two things that it's going to uh, do to us either it's going to uh, help us from the uh, side effect of the systemic therapy and to if there is a tumor uh, implantation of the cell that we are uh, rejected after the eurbt it's going to obviously kill these uh, cells Uh, the decision to do a cycle therapy depends on the recurrence and progression as the higher profit in the previous slide so there are three uh, three uses of this therapy either it's as an adjuvant so when it's used as an adjuvant it is done at the urbt to prevent implantation the other uses are prophylactic and therapeutic in prophylactic uh, after a complete urbt to prevent uh, recurrence and progression of the disease in therapeutic the idea is to cure the disease cure the disease so when drvd is for some reason unsuccessful or incomplete we can give this therapy to uh, for the, uh, the remaining of the disease and case so we have uh, three methods and two goals therapy three goals for this uh, technique so uh, one such agent is pcd we are listening uh, to this vaccine recently for another reason for the its uh, role in covid 19 how are uh, we uh, give this uh, this vaccine in intravesically for the treatment of uh, non muscle invasive and it is a different different roles in uh, <coughs> that is different uh, uh, risk reduction it's a live attenuated mycobacterium vaccine uh, basically it's an in in immuno therapeutic agent and how it works is it, it it's going to induce more nuclear infiltrates your c t t4 cells and uh, your uh, other other immune other immune cells it it induces expression of inter interferon uh, gamma and uh, basically uh, expresses the mhc class 2 molecules on the cell so all these roles are in immunotherapeutic so its mechanism of the proposed mechanism of pcd action is its local its ability to produce a local immune response uh different dosages and schedules are assigned uh, uh for different stages induction regime regime of pcd is weekly for 6 weeks followed by no pcd is given and it started on uh, starts after 2 weeks of uh, drvt uh, 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 maintenance therapy is considered for high risk patient the intravesical pcd is one of the most effective non based uh, most efficacious in non based bladder cancer uh, therapy should so it has shown the delay of tumor progression decrease the need of subsequent cystectomy and improve the overall uh, survival of these patients it is considered to be a treatment of choice in a patient of carcinoma and site the <laughs> long term follow up has shown that uh, intravesical therapy the uh, progression free rate is stronger uh, in patient who, who are given uh, pcd or disease specific survival is also significantly increased with the help of pcd 
it or when it is associated with its uh, toxicities and since it is a live uh, vaccine it should be wired in to be uh, compressed and more efficient uh, and it should be used uh, with with certain uh, the next uh, chemotherapy agent is mitomycin 3 uh, mitomycin is uh, a dna inhibitor it is used as an anti tumor anti uh, anti clotting because it inhibits the dna uh, it has a specifically higher molecular weight so it's not going to be absorbed uh, into the uh, blood stream and the effects are local limited to the bladder uh, it has an established role as a single intravenous administration in low risk patient after the uh, drb so for a uh, low risk patient a single dose is given after drb however other strategies are also available uh the idea of the dosage is initially we were giving a dilute uh, concentration 20 mg in 20 ml normal saline however the new regime shows that a uh, higher concentration in uh, 20 ml followed by dehydration induced by uh, fluid restriction is more helpful than the uh, uh, dilute uh, concentration of this uh, drug many modes of uh, installation are advised the most uh, commonly used is single intravenous chemotherapy for low grade low risk patient multiple adjuvant therapies are also advised in for uh, recurrent multi uh, for multifocal in 60 course of intravenous chemotherapy and other administrative approaches include induction of hyperthermia and intra bladder hyperthermia with the help of microwaves and electromotive drug these two techniques are going to increase the absorption of the mitomycin drug into the uh, uh, bladder tissue again it is also associated with its own toxicities one is uh, cystitis which is limited to bladder and the other one is a hypersensitivity reaction uh, uh, which is shown on your palm and sole and your genitalia so they have their own risk but the other agents which are worth mentioning are uh, yeah, gemcitabine it has similar uh, effects as mitomycin however it's a uh, it is a better toxicity profile apirubicin as is shown in uh, effect in low risk intermediate risk patient the other important is thiodipa it's the only drug which is fda approved however it's not commonly used because of its uh, side effect profile and uh, the risk that it establish in these patients immunosuppression uh, radio therapy for select patients who are unable to go uh, surgery we use radio therapy and it has established its roles it has shown complete response uh, and released the interval uh, released the tumor progression in 5 year and 10 year chemo preventive therapy <coughs> it's being studied how a door hole has been established for chemo preventive patient with uh, previously treated for non invasive bladder cancer and lastly but not the least the surveillance since it's a cancer it has a very high recurrence rate a very high progression rate so a protocol has been established how we going to survey this patient so the combination of Uh, cystoscopy and urine cytology and your markers are going to be used. Uh, the combination is every three months for 18 to 24 months after the initial diagnosis. Then every six months for the for two years and after that we will do an annually survey your patient of that cancer. Although the accuracy of most tests relies on subjective and most of operator dependent, however, this uh, cytology still remains key. System official remains the gold standard of for diagnosis. Thank you. Thank you very much. So uh, excellent, excellent presentation by someone who is just starting the understanding of uh, the subject. So uh, there are many points which uh, uh, can be elaborated upon, and there are many things which can be taken as something um, for future discussion. Right. But my uh, main aim is. Um, to get all of you involved in something which is uh, 
uh, continued education. Uh, since you are all at your home at a place which is away from, from the institute, so we would like you all to be connected and uh, read something so that um, everything or everyone should be focused and stay on course. Uh, all these topics which are given to 14 of you, uh, if you combine them, it will comprise, to my knowledge, 50% of urology. So if we uh, take it one subject every day, and if everybody of us is involved in it, then it would be, uh, I think, better to understand and uh, just revise ourselves with all that that have been done. And then we will uh, move forward for the rest of uh, urology that has been there, right? So uh, my plea to all, uh, all my friends is, uh, they are at their places. So um, for instance, tomorrow there will, there will be another topic. So we will right. start with um, um, all these specific topics, but there are other topics which are the basis of urology, for instance, maybe urinary tract infection, which I have given to somebody else also. So all these topics which are left behind will be taken after these 14 topics are done. And then this thing will go on and on. Now somebody has asked me, I think it was uh, Jamal or Jalal, that uh, sir, this is, if this is a topic which is given to me, and if it is very difficult, uh, then maybe I would not be able to do my research on that topic as specific uh, topic for um, MS research. Now you see that the whole process of understanding of uh, philosophy and science doesn't start at, at one page. So uh, what happens is we start with one thing and then maybe we don't drop it, we just modify it uh, so that we'll be able to not only understand ourselves but also to uh, make some research on it. So uh, don't be hesitant in starting to understand anything which is new. Uh, for me, it would be easier to say, for you it would be difficult to understand because you are just starting the, the whole process. But uh, if, you, if you believe in me, then you will be doing MS in urology. It is not MS in, uh, say, non-muscle invasive bladder cancer. So right. you, you have to be a journal urologist first, and then there is some special interest in some special topics that would make your research topic, right? So if anybody wants to say anything at this point, uh, uh, we are welcome for this uh, discussion. Please, please. You first raise your hand and then I'll just click it. No one, what do you say? Because you are a little bit senior. Slowly. Yes, slowly. Sir, so, uh, very, very nice presentation. Good to hear about a difficult and complex topic. Yes. Yes, uh, compiled everything. Uh, I have this question, uh, sir, I want to ask you. Yeah, just raise your voice a little bit, uh, your volume, and then we'll understand. I, want, yeah. I just want to ask uh, a few queries which are in my mind. Uh, I, I cannot understand these things. Uh, so can I ask a question from you? Yes, yes, you can ask from me also. So, uh, number one, sir, uh, recently we were having a patient who was giving a uh, on immunosuppressants. So uh, he was uh, diagnosed with bladder tumor. Uh, uh, they were uh, giving a MM after uh, the bladder is prepared for yeah. So they were uh, delaying the BCT because BCT can uh, they can further uh, uh, half the bladder. So uh, in the presentation, uh, the Rafe has mentioned that. Uh, in immunosuppressive patients and old patients, uh, the chemotherapy, yes. uh, the intravenous chemotherapy is avoided. So yeah. uh, I just want to ask you, uh, old, what is old and uh, immunosuppressive of on how much immunosuppressive he is so that he can be, be avoided of the uh, chemotherapy. So before uh, Rafi answer this question, <laughs> I just tell you, Noman, this is very difficult for even for me to answer this okay. question. Uh, right. So, second thing. Yes. The second thing is that uh, you showed the blue light. Yeah. Uh, cystoscopy. Cystoscopy. Yes. 
concept is the philosophy is this hexa amino levolinic acid has got an affinity with uh, the tumor cells now wherever these tumor cells are they will take up this uh, this compound and it will be um, violet in color against a background of blue light you won't see this if you have got a, a a white light cystoscopy for instance what we do these days in our op operation theater is white light cystoscopy in blue light cystoscopy the background is is blue over that background everything which is taking up this hexa amino levolinic acid will turn red or violet in color so it is not at one point maybe there are certain cells which are on the other points maybe there are certain areas on the right side of the wall the left side of the bladder wall um, floor or the roof so that answers your question sir that answers it and sir uh, the last thing uh, what about the grading uh, grading of bladder tumor cn m staging is all for the great sir uh, this grading and stating only um, uh, if the both things will uh, tell us about the treatment plan or only we can go from uh, grading to you see uh, 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 what the specific topic of rafe's presentation is uh, non muscle invasive bladder tumor so he has um, he has just uh, confined himself to that aspect Uh, right. This is not something which is for the whole, um, say, the gamut of the disease. So uh, we can uh, come back to this uh, specific thing because there is another person who has been given this topic of muscle invasive bladder cancer. Yes, so sir. whenever that uh, comes up, uh, we will have a discussion on that aspect also. So just um, just stay with us for a while, maybe a day or two. ठीक है. So it is excellent uh, again. from rafe uh, is there any other point from any anybody anybody else just raise your um, your hand so that i can hear your voice so starting from rahim because he'll be the next tomorrow rahim rahim uh, are you here hello uh, assalam alaikum sir assalam alaikum so rahim sir uh, you are on tomorrow yes sir inshallah right ji so thank you very much it has been you, excellent presentation and yes. more than what i am expecting and um, uh, again a word of advice okay. this is not the final topic we will right. be able to do a lot of things it's it's a discussion it's a two way traffic maraza, it's, maraza, maraza. it's a two way traffic between um, uh, the senior people here and uh, and you right. yourselves right? right so thank you very much the office